Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, hopefully you can hear me and uh, the, <clears throat> the translation is OK. Um, this is often known in the UK as the graveyard shift. It is the last one of the day, and I will try not to make you go to sleep over the next half an hour or so. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to, to Piva and to Mahal for their, um, their presentations. A lot of what I'm going to talk about is, um, is based on the science which they have just shown you. So, every day is a school day. Um, some of the things which I've learnt in my 30 years of farming. I'll tell you a little bit about um, me first, and then we'll move into to what we do. Uh, I left university um, 30 years ago in England. Before university, I worked in Australia for 12 months on six different farms. The farms uh, ranged in size and crop type. Um, one farm, we were using flood irrigation, uh, growing rice and wheat uh, to the other end of the scale, which was a 150,000 hectare sheep station with 110,000 pedigree merino sheep. That was quite busy. Um, after university, I worked in Zimbabwe, in southern Africa, uh, completely different. Um, I was an assistant farm manager on an 18,000 hectare ranch. We had 5,500 beef cattle. Uh, we grew 230 hectares of tobacco and 300 um, hectares of corn for grain. Most of the work on all the crops was done by hand and we would have up to 250 workers uh, on the farm at peak harvest time. Uh, I returned to the UK um, and then managed a thousand hectare crop farm before returning to work. So I can, and in 1996, uh, I returned to the family farm. Um, I've always continued to have other jobs outside of the farm, including consultancy and farming, um, other farm management. I personally think it's really important for sons and daughters of farmers to get off the farm for a few years, learn new ways, new techniques. Uh, it prevents them from being used as a cheap labour source by their parents. And when they return, they bring fresh ideas to the business. So uh, my farm, um, we are about 130 kilometres north of London. Uh, we're farming around 620 hectares currently, 100 of which is owned, 300 hectares on a long-term lease for 45 years, although our landlord is taking 90 hectares back after harvest in 24 to build a solar park. And we have um, stabiliser cows as well, which is a, a new enterprise for us. Uh, we have grass which we can't plough up. Um, we have had beef cattle always before on a bed and breakfast basis, um, where we've been paid for live weight gain. But that's no longer really uh, viable. Um, the stabilizers are a composite breed, originally from Nebraska in the USA. The cows are relatively small, only up to 650 kilos, and hardy. They can live outside, they're easy calving, and they live off grass, not, expensive, not an expensive cereal-based diet. Um, and that's also part of our reintroduction of livestock into our rotation which is known as the golden hoof um, on cover crops. More of that later. Um, our weather data, um, this is our, currently what our weather data is looking like. Um, we have around 750 millimetres of rain per year. But you'll see that um, August, our harvest month, is one of our wettest months. October, our drilling month, is one of our wettest months. And... April, which is one of our best growing months, is one of our dry months, driest months. So uh, quite a challenge. Um, soils, as, as has been uh, said earlier, soils are our most important um, 
my most important asset on the farm. Our soils are mainly Hanslope series clay, which is a chalky boulder clay uh, with limestone underneath. The limestone is occasionally at the surface, but mostly it's four metres or so below the subsoil. Our clay content ranges uh, between 35 and 60 per cent, so combined with our rainfall data can be a challenge. Um, the rented land is mostly poorly drained, so it gives us a, a limited window in the year for when we can actually get on the fields to do work. It's also a perfect environment for a main challenge in the grass weed, the grass weed black grass, more of which to come. And with our rotation and cultivations policy, we're trying to encourage and increase our soil bacteria, our mycorrhiza. Um, machinery Park is a lot smaller now than it was. Um, we have two tractors, uh, one combine, a self-propelled sprayer. And you can see on the front of the sprayer, um, we have these can either apply slug pellets or can apply small seeds. So we can drive through a crop prior to harvest and apply seeds with equipment we've got. Um, the, the pelleters are GPS controlled, so we can drive at variable speed and put our um, application rates on as we like. Um, the Simba DTX, oh, the Simba DTX is um, similar to a Vardastat top down, and we can also put a small seeder unit on top of that if we're preparing, putting cover crops in before a spring crop. Uh, we have a horizon six metre drill, which I haven't got any photographs of, unfortunately, because it's gone back to horizon for some modifications after this year's drilling. And we also run a, a six metre time drill. Um, so in total, our horsepower per hectare in tractors is now 0.65 of a horsepower. And if you add in the combine and the sprayer, combine at 450 horsepower, sprayer at 225, we're 1.75 horsepower per hectare, which I think is quite low. And our move to direct drilling and to reduce cultivations has enabled that cost saving. Um, So our main challenges, black grass I talked about earlier. Um, it is probably the biggest driver of what we do on the farm uh, in terms of how our farming works. Uh, it is resistant to quite a few, um, quite a few, quite a lot of chemistry. Oh, hang on, I'll move on again. So if not controlled, it can reduce our yield by over 50%. Uh, we've got a lack of re uh, reliable chemical control. So we use um, rotations, so we have more access to different active ingredients in terms of chemical control. Um, we use uh, different crops, so different crops and varieties. The varieties need to be competitive. We use hybrid barleys and we use wheat varieties with a more vegetative, so growing along the floor, growth habit in the autumn. Um, we use direct drilling, so we're not disturbing the soil, which prevents um, seed germination, and if we are cultivating, it is very shallow. We use rotational ploughing uh, every seven years for beans. Uh, black grass seeds are viable in the soil for three to five years, so that allows us to plough, to, to bury, and to bring fresh ones up. Um, and if we, compaction is also leads to water logging, uh, which is good for black grass. So we use a subsoiler to repair that compaction as quickly as possible. Increased costs. I don't need to tell all of you sitting in this room about how much more expensive it has got to farm in the last five to 10 years. Machinery in the UK, has increased by 6% twice a year for the last four or five years. Um, fuel is forecast to be at 90 pence a litre. So 
through our our change to um, our change to reduce tillage into direct drilling, we've taken about 50 litres of hectare of fuel consumption out of our costs. Um, so there's two to four. Um, all our tractors are now linked with Green Star with GPS, um, so that we are more accurate in our applications and in in everything else that we do. Particularly as cultivation equipment seems to start at £10,000 per metre width, we want to be uh, as good at it as we can be. Just a, a little bit, I was uh, playing on the plane yesterday, some comparisons. When I started back in 1995, a 170 horsepower tractor was £38,000. It's now nearly £150,000. Fertiliser was £71 a tonne, it's now over £300. Our um, agrochemical cost was around £100 a hectare, it's now over £300. Wheat then was £130 a tonne and it's now £190. So in comparison, the cost, the increase of the price of wheat hasn't kept up with the increase of everything else. Um, land is also expensive. Um, rental land in our area now is £500 per hectare per year. I pay about 200 on mine. And the land price to buy is 20, between 21 and £25,000 per hectare. Labour is another challenge. Um, as you can see, We've reduced labour by quite a lot. We've we used less operations, less of everything, but the UK labour market is very expensive. Uh, so a good sprayer operator, tractor driver, will be around um, 48,000 euros per year, plus a house, plus the use of a vehicle, medical insurance, and a pension. So if anybody you hear a good on a sprayer or good on a tractor, I'll take your CVs, come and work for me. It's great. Um, changing weather patterns. We are seeing the weather change in our region. I don't know about you guys. We have now have um, colder, wetter springs, um, which limit our window for growing. Uh, and we have what we like to call midday soils. So at 5 to 12, it's too wet. At midday, it's perfect for drilling. And at 5 past 12, it's too dry. So we have a very narrow window in the spring now for drilling, which has also led me to reduce my spring cropping area and move back into autumn cropping um, because it's uh, a more reliable in terms of um, germination. So I have two boys. The big one on the left that one is in his final year at university. The little one is currently driving a combine harvester in South Australia before he goes to university next year. Our business currently is not big enough for all three of us to live out of it. I've said about land. Uh, this is more of a long-term issue, but it's always in the back of my mind and my wife's mind of how we can accommodate these two within our business. Um, that photograph was taken in March. The younger one had been playing in the National Schools Under 18s Championship and they just won the cup, so they were both quite happy. Um, the past. This was an article from Farmers Weekly in 1996. Uh, wrong button. A very youthful me. Um, and we did everything with ploughs and powerhouse at that time. Uh, there are some figures there which are 35 years out of date, but you can just see how expensive it was. Um, so what do we actually do? One of the main lessons I've learned is farm the field in front of you. Use your knowledge and skills um, to do what you do best. We, have a, we use a variety of options and it doesn't always pan out exactly how I planned it. Some of you may know that um, Mike Tyson, the boxer, has a, an interesting quote that no plan survives the first punch in the face. 
So for us, it's, you know, the weather does different stuff to you. We do have a plan, but we remain flexible. Um, cover crops, Peeba talked very much about cover cropping. Um, my favourite mix, which is relatively cheap, is black oat, hairy vetch, with a pinch of phacelia. Phacelia in the UK will grow hugely and overtake those other crops. The black oat is rooting to a metre, 1.2 metres, so giving me plenty of soil structure. The hairy vetch will root to around 750 millimetres and gives me the legume and the phacelia is just working in those roots in the top to give me a really nice surface to work in. Um, we do use catch crops where we can, where the weather is right, so between harvest and um, autumn drilling. And what I'm trying to make work at the moment, which is frustrating me because I haven't quite got there yet, is to have a permanent understory of small-leafed white clover. So the field is always covered in clover. Uh, we would drill into it with a disc drill, um, and every time we drill into it or do something, the clover will give us 20 to 30 kilos per hectare of nitrogen. But we also have to ensure that that clover is grown as a crop and any bare patches are reseeded and it's there um, annually and looked after annually. Um, companion crops, I've got a video of this uh, shortly. In uh, our oilseed rape, we use uh, a companion mixture of fenugreek, buckwheat and clover. Um, the buckwheat and the fenugreek are there to distract the cabbage stem flea beetle, which is trying to eat the cotyledons, and they are relying on smell to find the, uh, to find the oilseed rape. So fenugreek, as I'm sure you all know, is quite a strong smell and it distracts the cabbage stem flea beetle. It's as simple as that, and it seems to, to work. Um, propizomide in November, December will remove all of, um, remove all of those crops. Uh, all our wheat and our oil seed rape are direct drilled, um, and I'm experimenting more with direct drilling spring crops. So our rotation is a seven year rotation. Um, it's helping us with our soil health, um, also with our direct drilling. And I've listed down there the, side, the, the tillage that we do in between crops. So after winter wheat, we'll grow winter beans, um, which we'll plough for. Then we'll direct drill winter wheat after the beans using the um, Horizon um, DSX. And as you can see, as we go through, we're, we're getting more and more to direct drilling. So as our soil organic matter improves, it will allow us to direct drill more. Uh, what I hadn't, column I didn't put in there um, was our, our yields. Wheat currently, we're averaging 9.25 tonnes per hectare. Uh, oil seed rape between 1.5 and 4.5. Very reliable, expensive crop for us to buy, so we've reduced our area of that. Uh, winter barley around 8.5 tonnes. Winter beans between two tonnes and seven tonnes. Winter beans in the UK are known as a wish crop. Um, some years I wish I'd had a lot more and some years I wished I hadn't bothered. Um, and spring oats between six and seven and a half tonnes. So, other lessons in no particular order. Yield maps. We've been yield mapping for 20 years at home. Um, and we overlay the maps and we see which part of the fields are consistently weak. And we take those out and we don't try and produce from them. We put them into an environmental scheme or we do something different um, with them. So we farm the profitable bits of the farm. Um, and your reflections. So I, I write each year between Christmas and New Year when I'm a bit bored and the kids are annoying me and all the rest of it, I write down what's happened in the previous year so that I can remember and I can learn from it. So it's not a, a big thing, four or five pages, but it's just telling me what went well, what didn't go well, what lessons I've learned. Um, so it's part of the, the school day. 
I also uh, employ a consultant to consult me, who is also a consultant. But sometimes you can fool yourself with self-justification and to have that critical friend who won't allow you to fool yourself, I think is really important in moving your business forward. Newer shinies kit is not all the be always the best. We're still, and that comes back to the flexible bit, we're still using bits of equipment which have sat in the nettles for 10 or 15 years when we're farming the field in front of us when it's appropriate to use it. Uh, listening. Importance of knowing your costs. We're really on top of, we know exactly how much it's costing us. So with the yield maps, um, we can produce margin maps uh, and know exactly how much it's costing us. Um, so there's a, a picture to come up shortly. So I think just in conclusion, and I haven't quite finished yet, but all the changes I've made and continue to make to my farming practices have been driven by both economic and agronomic decisions. And they keep my farm sustainable, both in economic terms and environmental terms. And I think that's the really important bit for me. So as a consequence of all of those things, I am actually quite a carbon-friendly farmer. So, um, not a very good picture. This is also rape, and you can see... Oh, we've got the video. Look at that. So you can see the alternate rows of companion crop. You can see where I didn't spray out the barley volunteers soon enough. So our rape's looking pretty good. So one of your colleagues at the background said, should I put a growth regulator on that? Well, absolutely, because it's also going to take uh, care of the light the leaf spot and the FOMA. Well, that's the one. So this is our Horizon DSX drill, the change in weather patterns. This was drilling spring oats two years ago in the beginning of May. Um, as you can see, the slots are still open a bit. We went back with a set of Cambridge rolls and close those over, but that field still produced um, nearly six tonnes per hectare of spring oats because one of the things was we were able to use the, the penetration to get the seed down into the moisture and then close, seal the surface off um, quickly. Uh, this is one of my favourite photographs. Um, so my teacher used to say, no one is ever going to pay you to stare out of the window. They sure got that wrong. So that also says, keep your head on a swivel, see what other people are doing and keep your eyes open um, as to what else is going on. So just a few thoughts to take away from today before we get to the Q&A. Farm the field in front of you. That is one of the most important lessons that I have learned. I've never made a mistake on my farm. I've always learnt lessons, but I've never made a mistake. Be flexible. Mother Nature will always challenge you. And I think also the lessons. I have two fields, one four hectare, one five hectare, where I practice, and they're my trial fields. And I do stuff, and it doesn't quite work. It's not 40 or 50 hectares, but it, it allows me to learn so I'd encourage you to have a trial field. Um, and farmer to farmer knowledge exchange. I've learnt more from talking to other farmers and going to visit farmer trials than I have from a lot of people. It also says when I say to my wife, I'm going to knowledge exchange meeting, I can actually be going to the pub. So that's quite cool. Um, Thank you for listening. I hope you're all still awake. I would love to answer any questions you've got because I'm better at questions and answers than I am at. <laughs>